All right, we're going to take a look at saving the human race. That's kind of what today is all about. <laughs> Jesus has a plan to save life on planet Earth for another 1,100 years, which if you look at Hollywood, they put out movies about Armageddon, the end of humanity, the destruction of the planet. No, it'll be here for another 1,100 years. Oh, well, what happened to our... What happened to our disaster, you know, doomsday? Anyhow, he wrote this plan down through the prophets Daniel and John. Daniel shows us that events before the tribulation, right? Most people are focused on the tribulation. They read the book of Revelation. They get a headache and they go, oh, it's going to be terrible, right? And yes, it's going to be the worst time in human history, right? But before that, it gets pretty ugly too. And oh, what? guess what? Before that, it's already ugly. Look how ugly our world is. Look at what's happened to America. This is not the America you grew up as in as, as children and teenagers. You know, those have already died. If they came back to life, they wouldn't recognize it. What? what? How can that be happening? You know. So John in Revelation shows the events ending the tribulation and the start of the Jesus invasion, right? Now, two billion people worship Jesus. Um, maybe four or five billion people know about Jesus, that he's a sweetie, right? He just wants you to give your heart to Jesus and everything is going to be swell. It's going to be wonderful, right? Um, but the thought of Jesus invading planet Earth with an invasion army coming from out of space, no, Jesus wouldn't do that. Uh-huh, that's what today is about. He's coming to invade planet Earth. Why is that? Because they don't want him down here. Get out. We don't want you messing with what we're doing down here. Right? So every year God is telling his people to gather and worship on the first day of the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar. This worship day is an annual reminder of how Jesus is going to save life on planet Earth for decades and decades and decades into the future. It's like, it's, it's, it's a fabulous shock and awe day. <laughs> because he's been promising to stop the stupidity down here for 6,000 years, and the day will come. Boom! And there he is. And most people, <clears throat> you know, it's in the book. You could Google it and ask for white horses. <laughs> I don't know what Google would say. They might have deleted that one. I don't know. But, but you know, and, and uh, nobody wants, nobody's looking for the day of the white horses. They're, they're looking for is, when I die, I'm going to heaven because they gave my heart to Jesus. <clears throat> Whatever happens on earth after that, who cares? <laughs> All right. So John reveals a galactic invasion force coming down this, from the sky led by Jesus. Right? What? He's coming to make war? Yeah, that's what it says. He's coming to make war with those who are rebellious against what he teaches. <laughs> Revelation 19, 11. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. <laughs> it's like, and, and let you know the secret, this is the third battle for Jerusalem coming up, right? But he's coming back to make war. And his name is called the Word of God. Oh, I wonder who that could be. Oh, that would be Jesus. And the armies in heaven followed him on white horses. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword with which he strike the nations, for he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Right? And it's like no more riots in the cities. No more peaceful demonstration where they burn the buildings down. <laughs> It's like, ah, uh ah, -uh, we don't do that no more, you know. So it's, you know, and uh, it's, it's like I, t I talked to an ex-Church of God minister a couple of weeks ago, and his, his mind is shot. It's like, I was wondering if he was on drugs, because he, he said almost everything in the Bible is not true. <laughs> it's like, what happened to you? You know, uh, yeah. so this invasion is scheduled for the last of the seven trumpet blasts, right? So there are seven trumpets, right? And the last three trumpets are woe, woe, and woe. 
but the first four trumpets are almost woe, right? If you, if you line them up with Daniel, they are <coughs> nuclear detonations, right? And you could almost you know, make a case that the first trumpet is California, <laughs> where a third of the trees are burned and all the green grass. It's like, well, that's what they're doing out in California, right? Which, which you know, it's like all they have to do is manage the forest. Right. Oh, and there were people out there lighting the fires, too. And, they, and you don't even see that on the news, do you? There are arsonists left, right, and center trying to light more fires. It's like, you know, let's make it difficult for them. But whatever. Anyhow, um, in Revelation 8, 2, And I saw seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given the seven trumpets. Paul had been told... We don't know exactly how, but he'd been to the third heaven, right? What will happen at the last of the seven trumpets? So he already knew that it was going to be at the last trumpet, and seven is the last trumpet. First Corinthians fifteen fifty-two. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, right? For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, right? And I don't have any idea how many, but I hope it's a lot. There have been 2,000 years, right? Plus Old Testament, faithful servants in the Old Testament, King David, you know, others, Samuel, you know, uh, Moses, all kinds of people in the Old Testament. And, and you know, there could be lots and lots of people from the Old Testament. And then there, could, there should be 2,000 wor 2, years worth of Church of God people. And what's a Church of God people? There's just one who pick up the Bible and they read what Jesus said and they say, well, he's the Lord, I'm just going to do what the Lord said. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Then other churches come along and say, you don't have to do what he said. Oh, really? Okay. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. So, 1 Corinthians 15, 53. This corruptible. Anybody got a corruptible? I got a corruptible. <laughs> right? Gary's just a little ahead of me, but I'm 75 soon, Right? And, and I'm not, you know, Ruth, Ruth Bader got to be 87, and I can't, I can't imagine me at 87. I can't imagine it. I don't want to imagine it. You know, anyway. I want to be young forever in a spirit being body. So why is Jesus planning such an event? Why would God want to come back here and invade the planet and make war with people? I thought he liked people. I thought Jesus liked people. Revelation 11, 18. The nations were angry. <laughs> well, they're angry now, are they? Right? Are there, are there any nations that are not angry? There's a handful, maybe Switzerland, Australia. You know, but there's a lot of na angry nations out there already. They're angry at Trump. You know? <laughs> Most people hate Trump. Get rid of Trump. Yellow, yellow man, right? Oh, no, well, orange man, sorry. Got the wrong color. Anyhow, the nations are angry and your wrath has come that you should reward your servants, that's us, right? and should destroy those who destroy the earth. We will have reached a point, humanly speaking, we've got the weaponry now. We already got it. They said, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago, we had enough nuclear weapons to destroy the planet like 10 or 20, maybe 30 times over. All right? And, and you know, climate change... You detonate a whole bunch of nuclear weapons and I guarantee you, you're going to have some climate change, mm -hmm. right? And, and it won't be plastic straws. It's going to be radioactive, atomic fallout, wind, nuclear winter. So Jesus also said that if he did not act, there'd be no flesh saved alive on the planet. So, you know, you can, you can dream, you know, nightmare if you want, out into the future where if he, didn't, if he didn't make this invasion to planet Earth on Day of Trumpets, right, the last trumpet day, right, if he didn't do that, we'd just wipe out and you'd have a dead planet floating out there in space and there'd be no humans. And he doesn't want that. And so he's, he's going like, okay, I'm giving you 6,000 years. See if you can't get it together and peace. And, you know, not just talk peace, but actually have peace. And on all levels, right? so no flesh would be saved alive on the planet. Matthew twenty four twenty two. Unless those days should be shortened, no flesh would be saved, saved alive. 
and and you know <coughs> in uh, trumpet one two three and four all seem to be nuclear detonations. I don't know how you can explain that in any other way than and, and we got the nukes already. They're already and they're all they're all lined up. They you know each nuke knows where it's supposed to go. They got theirs pointed at us and we got ours pointed at them and and he's carrying the nuclear football around with him everywhere he goes. I don't know where he is when he sleeps, but imagine it's in the next room. <laughs> ring, ring, they just launched at us. Oh, where's the nuclear? Here it is, sir. Okay. <laughs> Nightmare. Anyhow, those in no flesh would be saved alive. So he's, he's telling us why he has to invade planet Earth, right? And once he's done it, then there'll be a museum or there'll be school classes for children and, and adults that, that Jesus came and saved us from destroying humanity off the planet. Wow! Is he a great hero or what? You know, because he knows how to do it. He created the planet. The first four trumpets indicate, like I said, nuclear detonations. Jesus is probably telling us, us end-time Christians, that nuclear war will lead to the destruction of planet Earth. Now, in 1975, I don't know how well we were doing with nukes, but, but you know, we weren't ready. Right now, we've got nukes everywhere. I mean, and, and the Chinese are getting their nuclear-powered submarines and their you know, missile-carrying submarines, and you know, Russia's got theirs and we've got ours. So Paul says the invasion will come as a huge surprise to most humans. And even before that, there's a huge surprise. And that is that the beast power, the Hitler beast power person, will appear to be Jesus Christ returned to the planet. It's going to be such an incredible trick. It's, it's like today, if you watch TV, one side accuses the other side of what the other side is already doing. <laughs> it's like, well, the, the truth is they're doing what we're doing. <laughs> but, but for Jesus Christ, and it says he sits in the temple of God and he shows himself that he is God and he has the power and the throne and the authority of Satan, the devil, to do it. Right, and he calls down fire from heaven. His helper, the false prophet, calls down fire from heaven. So he's the false Christ, <coughs> and and the the world will either accept him as the false Christ, or the you know, theoretically the the Christ, or they'll be killed. Right, and you could, if you worked at it, we could have a little session. If you worked at it, you could make some of the prophecies of the Bible fit the false Christ making war, right? Jesus comes to make war. You could make the beast power who makes war and kills a third of mankind. You could, you know, you twist a few things. You could make it seem like the Bible agrees with the false Christ. And so they're all happy now. They've started their millennium ahead of time. And they're all happy they've got Jesus. You either, you either worship the false Jesus sitting up there in Jerusalem, or you're dead. Okay, so now we've got peace. Right? It's a beautiful day. Right? In, in uh, what, September, October. It's just going to be a beautiful day. And, and the sun will be blocked out. And it'll be dark when it should be sunny. It should be morning. Right? And people see the sky scroll back. And like, oh, what's that? And they've already been told we're being invaded from Mars or some, somewhere out there in the universe. And the fly, unidentified flying objects, it's like, here they come. What was it? Oh, it's a horse. It's horses. It's people on horses. That's why they're flying. You know, we thought they'd be rockets or spaceships or something. You know. So anyhow, in 1 Thessalonians 5.2, you yourselves know perfectly. So 2,000 years ago when he wrote this, this congregation in Thessalonica, he said, you know perfectly. I already taught you how this is going to work, right? And we rehearse the same thing every piece of trumpets, right? We rehearse it, we go over it, because when it happens, all the neighbors, all the people we know are going to say, well, I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't think that's in the Bible at all, <laughs> but that's Christ over there in Jerusalem, and that's who we follow. 
and he's going to save the planet because there'll be no more war because he's killed everybody who wants to make war with him. Right. So you know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night to 99% of the planet because they're just, it's a nice world by then. They're happy, right? And, and Jesus, the, theoretically the creator, is now in charge and ruling the planet. So what could happen? What could go wrong? <laughs> Whoops, the sky scrolls back. Shock and awe. Here comes an invasion from outer space. Who knew? Well, we knew because we rehearse it year after year after year on the Feast of Trumpets, right? <laughs> Verse 3. For when they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. And they're, they're saying, right now they're saying peace and safety in, is in Jerusalem. In, in Israel, in the Middle East. They're talking about lots and lots of nations joining in and oh, everybody's going to sign peace agreements with Israel. It's like, but what's the reality? The reality is there's two billion Muslim people who are very diligent about their Quran Bible thing. More diligent than most of the you know, Christian churches. They will die, happily die, blow themselves up killing people for their Allah, right? And those two billion people want Israel off Muslim territory. Now, the leaders, what do the leaders want? What do leaders of nations want? What do they want? Peace. They want what? Peace. Peace. Power. Peace of the action. Power. 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 <laughs> right? They want to stay in power, right? And so Trump, you know, remember Reagan said carry a big stick? Wasn't it Reagan? <laughs> Somebody said carry a big stick. Anyhow, well, it's like, Roosevelt. it's what? That was Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, okay, Teddy. Good old Teddy. All right. Anyhow, carry a big stick. Well, Trump's got a huge big stick, right? His economy is like on steroids. It's coming back, right? And he's, he's crippling the Chinese economy and he's crippling the, the Russian economy and he's crippling the Iranian economy and he's crippling the North Korean economy. And, oh, Syria, you almost never hear about Syria anymore. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're struggling, although China, Russia's helping them. But anyhow, it, it, you know, so Trump has got a huge stick. And so the leaders of these Arab nations, it's like, well, hey, what, what do you want? Sign a piece of paper? Sure. What do you want? Yeah, let's do that. All right, come to the White House? Yeah, sure. Okay, no problem. <laughs> right. right? But the people, remember, did anybody remember the Arab Spring? Anybody remember that? What happened at the Arab Spring? That group took over in all the places that the Arab Spring started. Yeah, and that was started over here yeah. by our guys. Anyhow, um, Mubarak. Remember Mubarak ruled Egypt for 30 years? And he, after they killed Anwar Sadat, who made the original peace agreement with Israel, right? they assassinated him, Mubarak took over. And he, he ratified and kept the peace agreement with Israel for 30 years. And then the Arab Spring got rid of Mubarak. Right? So <clears throat> all you've got to do is overthrow the handful of people who are in the government. And then you've got two billion, two billion Arabs, Muslims, who want Israel gone. So how, could, how quickly could this happen? How quickly could this flip back the other way? It just takes a spark, right? And I have no idea what that spark could be. But, but the peace, the peace, peace, and sudden destruction, that could happen. You, you know, you're seeing the peace, peace on the TV now, right? Trump is getting young. Know, you know, Nobel Prize Peace Prize and all that stuff. But, but it's like you, you pull a rubber band one way and then you let it go. Which way does it go? Back the other way. So, anyhow. So, peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction and they shall not escape. But you're in, you are not in darkness. You church members are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. It won't come as a surprise. <clears throat> now, why won't it come as a surprise? Well... <laughs> Well, what? We practice. we practice it. We talk about it. We think about it, right? And there are seven trumpets. So <clears throat> after the first trumpet, which is hard to explain, right? The second trumpet is easy to see. When it happens, 
and you get a news report of a third of the ships in the sea were destroyed and a, thir and a third of the creatures underneath those ships died and a third of the sea where those ships used to be turned to blood. You suppose when you see that in the news headlines and the reporters go, an amazing thing has happened. The sea has turned to blood, <laughs> right? Your brains are going to go, trumpet number two, that's two, that's two. Through it, number three is on its way, right? And three is people die, they drink the water of the rivers and the, and the streams and they die from drinking the water. What does that sound like? Radioactivity in the water. You drink a radioactivity water and you're dead. You're gone, right? And number four is, is nuclear winter. And I struggled with this for many years, but unless you've got a better explanation, I'd love to hear it, right? And there's an eight hour time block, which is a third of a day. The earth rotates 24 hours, 24 hours, 24 hours, right? A third of a 24 hour rotation is an eight hour time block. You look at Moscow, and then you go out towards Alaska, you know, Soviet Union, they used to call it, takes up eight to 10 time blocks, right? Now you can't nuke, you can't have nuclear winter over Europe. Why not? Anybody know why not? The Gulf Stream, the Okay, biblically speaking, prophecy wise, the, the beast power comes out of Europe. So you have nuclear winter where the Europe is, no beast power, right? And, and you're right, the trade winds blow that away. They come off, um, up, up in the north, they come over Soviet Union, Siberia, Canada, and then dip down over us and keep on going. Um, so, so nuclear winter for eight hours, an eight hour time block, could easily include Russia and China. Right? And then what do you got left? You got Australia, you got South Africa, you got South America, and you got Europe. And Europe has started a lot of good wars and they're gonna jump in and have another good one. Right? Okay, so um, Paul, let's see. God has designed an annual worship day to look forward to and prepare our minds for the huge events yet to come on our planet. So so you know, when trumpet one happens, it's like, ooh, what was that? Trumpet two, boom, we know what that is, trumpet two. Trumpet three, people are dying from drinking the water, that's trumpet three. Okay, trumpet four is nuclear winter. Oh, guess what happens next? Trumpet five, the beginning of the tribulation. Uh-oh, we are on the doorstep of the tribulation when we see the first four trumpets. But we're all longing for and looking for the seventh trumpet. It's like two more trumpets. We got to tough it out for two more trumpets or they might kill us, right? And if they kill us, what happens to you the second after you die? Up you come in a spirit being body, right? You saw that muscle there, that earlier little bit, <laughs> right? You're going to come up. The men are going to come up looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his youth, right? I'm and the ladies, I don't, I won't even, you know, the ladies are coming up and looking really good. Only there won't be ladies. You won't be a lady spirit being or a man spirit being, you'll be a God spirit being. You know, so whatever you were here, you'll just be God, God family over there. Paul taught in the New Testament believers about God's annual festivals. Colossians 2, 16, and there's two verses here that are pretty poorly translated and they, and they give you a little headache if you worry, you know, if you, if you focus in the wrong places. But he says, let nobody judge you. Don't let other people judge you. Let the Bible judge you or the church of God judge you, right? Regarding a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. The new moons is new months. Moon and month are the same thing because the old calendar was based on where the moon is, right? When you have a new moon, that's the beginning of the month. The 15th day of each month is the full moon, right? We go to the Feast of Tabernacles on the 15th day of the month and there's the full moon, right? So which are a shadow, right? That's Old Testament word, shadow of things to come. Okay, that's the future. It's, it's pointing to, it's a sign, it's a pointer, it's a signpost, it's, it's, a, it's a focus on a future event. And that's what we've been doing, you know, with Feast of Trumpets for all these years and other, other festivals. 
these New Testament festivals sharpen our minds as to what to expect as human history unfolds. Now, <clears throat> what, what we see in Daniel and what we see in the seven trumpets, the rest of the world, are there other churches teaching that stuff? Most of them have just got you whizzing off to heaven. Boom, you're gone, right? And, and then Armageddon, and that's bad news for whoever's left behind. Right. Um, so, if, if think about this. You, how many of you have seen the movie The Titanic? Anybody, anybody seen it? Right. I, I, yeah, I saw it and it, and it still plays in my mind. <laughs> like, oh. yeah. um, if the Titanic was equipped with iceberg radar, it would not have sunk. Right? Now you might be thinking, what's iceberg radar? <laughs> Nobody's invented it yet, right? But if they had iceberg radar, they wouldn't have hit the iceberg. Somebody in the inside would have said, ah, hey, the radar says there's an iceberg right out in front of it. Don't, don't hit it. <laughs> right? Okay. God shows us his spiritual radar festivals. The festivals are like a radar of what you're going to be seeing when you get into the future in the years ahead. They look ahead and they prepare our minds so the galactic invasion is no surprise when it comes, right? All of us, if, if we're standing there, right, and the sky scrolls back and we look up and we see the, the sky is full of white horses, right? We should, we should just like almost melt with joy it's like it's here you know the day we've been looking for and rehearsing and longing for and hoping for it's here right so way back in the bible god promised that he would send a great leader to run a godly government on earth oh wouldn't it be nice to have a godly government in new york city and you know, Seattle and everywhere on the planet. Wouldn't that be great? Isaiah 9, 6. Unto us a child is born. The government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Mighty God and Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Oh, and by the way, once he lands on planet Earth, there'll be no more war after the Battle of Armageddon. It's you know, that last Armageddon battle, that's the last war, right? And, and interestingly, uh, plague, let's see, the, the, the wrath of God plagues, the bowls of God's wrath. The last one, when it describes what it is, all it says is, it is done. It's over. It's finished. And you tie that with Zechariah 14. And when the battle of Armageddon is finished, all of the enemy soldiers against Christ, they're all dead. And there's just smoke in the air. And it's done. It's finished. It's over. And I believe that's the day of atonement. It's done. It's over. And God's wrath is appeased. And now God is happy with planet Earth because he's going to got a, a clean slate. And he's going to start all over again. And we're going to do it his way for a thousand years. Amen. Oh, it's going to be great. Okay. Jesus has promised... Jesus is that promised great leader, All right? And, and see, the false, the fake Christ is going to be appear to be a promised great leader. And Satan will, you know, he's the master of deceit. He's going to trick people. And people, you know, okay, people are going to be so fed up. People are pretty fed up now, aren't they? With politics in America, right? You know, so, so have... World War Three in the Middle East, right? Then nuclear war, then the tribulation, right? People are going to be fed up, and and you know they want a stop. This is madness. Stop, and that's why they'll accept the false Christ at first, and then when Christ shows up in the sky, they'll be angry. It's like no, no, no. We don't want no. We don't want more. You know, no more, no more. But damn, God has the answer. Jesus will appear in the sky for all to see and stop the human war machines, no more war, and bring about 
peace and prosperity for a thousand